Hey guys, Laser Game Devs here, and today I want to go through and talk to you about adding gear and equipment to your characters. It's one of those things we all like to do in RPGs, and it can actually be a real pain in the backside if you're not entirely sure what you're doing. Or at least it used to be a lot worse. You used to have to like merge skeletons together and all sorts of weird stuff. But with the new technology from Fortnite, they've actually made it a whole lot easier. And it's also a lot more flexible so that we can have new bones and new interesting things adapted to it, as well as um, additive animations and stuff and do lots of interesting things. So I'm going to go through and give you a really brief example of how to do it. You'll you'll understand the steps, but the actual outcome is, is uh, you know, not that great, but that's fine. So the first thing I need to show you is uh, how to kind of get the skeleton for the mesh you want. In this case, I just used the mannequin. So if, if that's what you're doing as well, I found the, the mannequin character mesh and I right clicked asset actions and I exported it and that exports it as a FBX format. OK, and then I imported the FBX into Blender and we'll re-import it here for you. Um, so you can see what I was working with and I don't actually need this mesh so we'll delete that. The skeleton is what you want and this is kind of, uh, Blender shows it in a really weird way, um, but this is effectively what you want. Now the, the key thing to remember is that this is just a helmet, right? So I don't need all these arm, legs, bones and things, I just need the head bone really. Um, but the, the thing to remember is that the root bone always needs to be connected. You need to have the hierarchy from the root bone to the bone that you're, it is most important to you, the, the, in this case, the head bone. So if you're making a pair of gloves, you need to have the root go up to the shoulders and down to the, the hands. Um, you can get rid of the legs and like stuff like that, but you need to have the root connected through the hierarchy. So. Yeah, so let me delete this because we don't want this now either. That should be fine. And what I'm going to do is just show you kind of what I did. So I have this again. It's all uh, Blender decided to just crash. So that's great. So, you know, it was just the bones all connected to each other. And then I had an extra bone on top, right? I had a, uh, I could probably open it up again, but it's fine. I can open it up here actually. Um, I can show you the skeleton. So I had the root that leads into the pelvis, into the spine, into the neck, head, and then I have head one and head end. So these these are the new bones that I've added, and I have an animation attached to them that's animating the helmet. It's an awful animation, but it's fine. So this this head is where it usually stop. This is the standard mannequin bone. Uh, mannequin bone setup and this is important to know because we're going to use this to blend per bone inside of the animation bp so speaking of the animation bp let's just put these on here that's one thing that we don't get when we bring the skeletal mesh in so let's create one we're going to right click on the skeletal mesh we're going to go to uh animation blueprint and we'll just call this helm anim bp and in here, we are going to get the, the kind of core of this thing, which is copy pose from mesh. And we'll just plug that in. Now, we could come into the event graph and get like the pawn owner and things and uh, make a variable and put the variable in here. But it's a little bit easier to just say use attached parent. And the way that works is it's going to kind of look at the parent of this mesh and use that which in this case what so that what we want to do then is inside of my player i have here i want to grab this skeletal mesh and put it inside my player and i want to put it inside the mesh i want to put it in, inside the mesh so it's a child of the kind of body the base mesh that we're moving around okay i want to reset these because that doesn't need to be a thing um, and you can see that it's not doing anything, but if we add the magical Hellman MVP, ta-da, it now perfectly follows because it's using the exact same bones, the exact same hierarchy, and the exact same animation. They'll never desync, it will just work. Just easy as that. And the only thing we did in here was copy pose from mesh. That, that really is it. 
So if you've made a pair of gloves and you know you just want them to lay over the top and you've you know skinned it all and stuff, that that's all you need to do. You're done, right? Perfect. So the other thing we can do though, because in this case I have a new animation, um, is we can say uh, we'll make a state. You don't you don't necessarily need to do this, but I I'm gonna try and do it properly instead of being a slacker. <laughs> Um, we're going to blend per bone, and in this case, the base layer is going to be the it moving how we like it, and then the blend is going to be the state machine. So this is where we needed to know that hierarchy. So the head was the last bone that belonged to the original mannequin. So that's where our blend is going to start. So we're going to come into this node here, and we're going to add a new layer array object. And we're going to say bone name head. So anything that's um, below the head on the hierarchy or above it, either one, uh, whichever way you want to think about it, um, is now going to be separate. It, it's not going to be controlled by this copy post from mesh. And that's going to run into there. And brilliant. So what we can do now is anything inside this state machine is only going to run on those new bones that we've created. So. We're going to get some information because on my third person character, I've made a Boolean called buffed. So we're going to get that. We're going to make sure that our owner is valid, first of all. And we'll cast this to a third person character. I'll make it a pure cast because I know it's always going to be one. And I'll get buffed because I set that up already. But of course, you could do this any way you like. Um, you can have it for all sorts of different things. If you're moving at a certain uh, speed, maybe you want your boots to become bigger. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you want something crazy to happen with your gloves when you start um, having low life. Maybe your gloves start to deteriorate or something. You can do any kind of like crazy stuff. Um, and we're just going to promote this to a variable. Okay, and we'll set that variable. We'll just call that buffed as well. So, in our state, wherever that is, getting a little bit lost. Hold on, new state machine. Uh, we'll set a state. Um, and we'll just have it be kind of blank by default. And because uh, we can't have a, there no, we can't, okay. And then a, a new state of buffed, and we'll put that animation in there. Oh, well, I don't actually need to do that, do I? Um, just grab it from here. We do that, and we'll say if we are if buffed, then we can enter, and we want to go back back if not buffed I believe this should work um, and that's going to do that now so that should work I think we just double check it we have buffed and not buffed so if this is true then hey look we're, we're moving and if it's false we're not moving anymore sweet so the only other thing i did in my player is i very very quickly made this uh this key bind that just when i press f it's going to flip flop between buffed so it's going to see what it is in this case it's false by default and it's going to set it to true and if it's true it's going to set it to false and it's just going to keep doing that every time i press f so i can come into my game now and oh i apparently made one lol and you can see, yep, yeah, it's following my character. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Fits on my head poorly, but that's down to me. <laughs> and if I press F, oh, there it is. It's animating, it's doing stuff. And if I press F again, it stops. And I can do that as much as I like. So, you know, you can imagine with this having all that information you can grab from your character. Everything you could do on your base mesh, you can now do for 
unlimited amount of items that are connected to your characters. Any kind of state that your character's in, any information that your character might be using or doing, um, even the animations that it's running. So if it's doing a certain animation, you can have it, you know, do do something, have an object do something. Um, yeah, like all sorts of crazy stuff. So it really does open the world up when it comes to adding gear to your character and really making it as modular and as ad as interesting as possible. So yeah, I really hope that helps guys. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool and I really want to see some stuff you guys are doing. So feel free to show me and let me see on, you know, Reddit or in the comments. Anyway, thank you very much and uh, yeah, have fun.